Hi there, my name is Anton Emmanuel. I'm a neurogastroenterologist and I work at University College Hospital in London and the National Hospital for Neurology and Neurosurgery in Queen Square. As a neurogastroenterologist, part of my job involves providing care to patients with neuromuscular diseases, including Duchenne. And the first thing I'd like to make clear almost is the fact that the gut is one long muscular tube. And when I say gut, I mean the passage which runs from your mouth down to your bottom end. And that tube is essentially a digestive organ which is surrounded by muscle. And in the same way as the muscles of the body can be involved in Duchenne, so too can the muscles of the gut. That involvement of the gut can involve any part of the system all the way from the top to the bottom. In fact, the commonest way in which it presents is in the colon with the symptom of constipation. And when the colon gets involved, it stops moving content down. That content is stools. And so those stools stay in the bowel for longer, become smaller and drier, which of course makes them harder to push out. And so the symptoms are of an infrequent urge to go and difficulty in passing. And those symptoms get progressively slowly worse. And one of the key things is to remember that the, that is a distinct symptom which is caused by the disease. It isn't part of other medications or lack of mobility or changes in diet or stresses. All those things may contribute, but there is a primary problem in how the gut muscles work to propel things down. And the reason I say that so emphatically is because that means that we should look for these symptoms and we should intervene and treat them early with drugs like laxatives. Because a well-used course of laxatives, as and when required, can really prevent the development of complications. Because constipation can result in complications. By straining, patients can develop hemorrhoids and difficulty with how they control their bowel. And at the other end of the system, when you feel uncomfortable and bloated because you're constipated, you're less inclined to eat, which can reduce the amount of calories you take in. And that can make things worse. Now the calorie intake part is another part of how the gut can get involved, because that involves how the stomach can become non-functional. So the stomach actually, again, is a muscular tube, but in fact it's a muscular tank. Because what the stomach does is to gradually increase in volume when you eat, and then gradually squeeze it out as the day goes on. And if that function of relaxation and squeezing goes wrong, then patients can't consume a normal meal and they feel full easier and feel nauseated. And that means there's less calories coming in, which we need to again look for and supplement by taking calories in supplementary form or think about even giving additional feeding sometime. And the whole feeding issue is yet a third complication that neurogastroenterologists see in patients with Duchenne's, namely of swallowing difficulties, what's called dysphagia. And dysphagia occurs because the muscular tube of the gullet this time doesn't contract as well. And when that doesn't contract as well, food can go down the wrong way. Instead of going down the food pipe, it can go into the lungs. And that's obviously potentially very serious because that can cause pneumonias. More often, however, what it does cause is reduction in calorie and liquid intake, which can result in dehydration and even a bit of malnutrition. So the key points I'd like to emphasize are that in a patient with Duchenne's, involvement of the gut is very common. Involvement of the gut can occur anywhere throughout the system, from the mouth all the way down to the bottom end. And one thing often makes the other worse. And as a patient or carer, it's really important when you have new digestive symptoms to present that information to your healthcare workers because they can often intervene. And as a healthcare professional, it's really important to be proactive and ask about these symptoms. They may seem embarrassing, but they're really important to our patients. So ask about bowel symptoms, ask about calorie intake, ask about safe swallowing, because by recognizing these things early and intervening early, we're able to improve quality of life and indeed length of life. Thank you very much.